So one thing, I, one concept I thought about, like, like I'm really trying to like get into psychology now. <laughs> uh, and one thing that I tried, which I didn't do a good job at, um, and it was didn't provide as much value as I thought, but was kind of looking at people's uh, like social media's accounts and uh, blog posts and, and kind of really look at like their word choice and how they say things and their tone. Um, and then being able to use that in my communication of like this person talks uh, in a more direct way. This person is a little more passive. Uh, this person, um, you know, has these interests. Uh, this is probably this person's personality type. Like I even came up with like a personality classification system um, and try to classify people's personality types. <laughs> Welcome to AI Unscripted Podcast. I'm Tyler Levin, an innovator in AI and data analytics and founder of Visual Intelligence. Each week, we have an innovative brainstorming session on practical sales and marketing AI solutions and tools uh, that can help your small to medium-sized businesses uh, take advantage of the AI opportunities, which is leveling the playing field for all of us. Uh, every episode, I focus on a specific segment within sales and marketing, offer innovative solutions that cater to different budgets, uh, investments, uh, time commitments, and expertise. Expertise. Um, in this episode, we're going to talk about uh, sales and uh, d business development teams uh, within a small tech company. Uh, please don't forget to uh, like and subscribe if you want to see uh, or hear all of our innovative ideas every week. All right. So how I do this podcast is the same structure uh, all the time, uh, just because I'm a very structured person when it comes to this. Um, we're going to do um, what the current challenges is for this, the specific segment, uh, what AI is good at in that segment, what AI is bad at. Um, then we're going to go into um, some different solutions. Uh, since you're going to probably be a, in all different types of, uh, of levels of what you want to do with AI, uh, I'm going to do um, what are some quick wins with tools. Um, so there's a lot of AI tools out there that you can use and you can kind of you, you can do some good stuff with you know, better than nothing. But um, some tools, just a single tool that you can use. Um, and then from there, uh, I say within a week, um, you're, you can do some things where you integrate multiple tools together um, and get some good value. Um, and then within a month uh, with some custom coding, usually a tool or two with some custom coding, um, you can get uh, some good value. And then within three months, um, generally that's uh, using your own model, training your own model. Um, you could be using some tools or we kind of develop your own tools, but uh, that will give you the best value. So I'm going to give you some use cases for all three levels, depending on uh, the quality that you want and how much commitment you want to do. Um, from there, we're going to talk about um, some different potential uh, pitfalls, um, things that I've I ran into actually doing this because uh, there, there's not that much information out there because it's so new. Um, so things that I actually experienced myself and, and some problems I ran into um, and some things I would say to, to look out for that I didn't know to look out for initially. Um, and then let's talk about like the, the future trends and uh, some of the predictions I see within this segment. Um, and that's going to be the structure pretty much every episode. So let's jump into the, the current challenges. Um, also, I'm, I'm going to be drinking just because I'm, I'm more comfortable when I'm drinking. So and this is just me uh, talking because I, I, I don't have friends that want to hear me talking. So you get to, to hear all my cool ideas. Uh, so within uh, sales and, and business development, um, specifically in, in smaller companies, small to medium companies um, and in the tech industry, um, there is a well, one. There's just a lot of opportunity in sales and marketing in general. And that's why my company focuses on that. Um, because initially, I actually, I wasn't doing sales and marketing at first. Um, I was just kind of doing, well, I've been doing data analytics, but I was just doing general uh, AI. But there, there's just so much opportunity in sales and marketing. I was doing it for my company. And I was just like, man, this is awesome. I know people need this, right? 
So AI in sales and marketing is a great use case in general. Um, but some of the challenges that that people have in or sales and, and business um, development teams specifically, uh, since this is what we're talking about this segment have, is uh, you're small, right? You, you, you have a small team. You're a small company. Um, generally, you're, you're probably multitasking and doing a lot of different things. Um, you probably have a, a variety of skills, um, but you're kind of spread thin because you're doing so many different things. Um, and and you're, you're trying to reach out to all of these different people uh, and keep in contact with all these different people and, and nurture the relationship. And you're, you're just pulled in so many different directions. On top of that, you, there's so many tech companies out, right? Um, there, there's... I mean, like I was on, there was this app Zumo day, which is, was, uh, I think, I think it ended today. Um, and there are just so many companies out in their software companies that, that have great products, but they just can't sell it because the competition is so high. So they give you this, this ridiculously low discount and lifetime membership or lifetime one-time uh, payment to be able to buy these softwares because there's so many softwares out. So the competition is super high. So really, like sales and marketing is, is the key to any company, right? It doesn't really matter how good your product is. I mean, it does, but if you don't have good sales and marketing, it's it's irrelevant, right? Um, so there's huge competition. You don't have any brand recognition. Um, you have pressure to have a huge ROI or have a, have an ROI on anything you do. Um, so so being you know in sales and, and business development in a tech small tech company is kind of unique to itself. Um, and so we're going to kind of, I'm going to hit some some different solutions on on how to solve some of those different things. But you kind of have a benefit because you can do some kind of guerrilla warfare type solutions that probably bigger companies can't do or don't want to do. Um, and there's always this huge thing about ethics and AI, but I, I mean, I'm an ethical person, but it, you know, business is business, right? Uh, you got to survive. So um, probably you can do some things that are a little more iffier than than a big company does, which will give you, you know, a huge benefit. Um, so uh, I find that a, a lot of people try to do everything using AI, and AI is really good at some things and really bad at others, and and or it could be decent at some things. But it's it's not good enough to put in production, um, and I had to to, to kind of learn that where I was trying to use AI for everything and certain things like just regular coding did the job, and, and I was trying to make AI do it, which wasn't necessary. Um, so so there are things that AI is good at and not good at, and so I definitely think when you're coming up with your use cases, luckily you're in sales and marketing or business development because you're listening to this um you're trying to think of the use cases you guys got a lot of use cases um because it's really good in this area um uh, some of the the good stuff it's um uh, some of the things it's good at is data enrichment that's kind of one of the key things i've been digging into lately is is enriching your data uh with ai generated insights or ai generated um kind of analyses. Um, and, and I'll talk a lot about that. Uh, also automating tasks. I mean, in, in sales, you got so many repetitive tasks or and or in business development when you're trying to uh, keep track of people, uh, maintain those relationships. There's, there's a lot of uh, ongoing tasks that you're doing. And so AI is, is great at that. Lead scoring. Um, and, and, and I'm doing kind of all this for my company, which is why this podcast kind of came up, because I just had so much things that I was thinking of and doing. Uh, but lead scoring is a good one also. And and, and, so, and I'm not saying that AI is going to do every part of all of this. It, AI has its own part in all of this. And, and it sometimes it's a bigger part, sometimes it's a smaller part. But generally, like that part is what makes it special and, and unique. And so you kind of want AI to do the least amount of work as possible, but the work that AI does will be super valuable and generally allow you to scale very quickly or scale whatever you're doing very quick. Um, and so those are kind of the, the, the three ones that I'm gonna kind of talk about in, in this uh, episode. Uh, but let, let's kind of go through what, what's not good in, in this segment. Uh, emotions. AI has zero emotions. AI does not care about how you feel, about what you think, about right or wrong. It cares about optimizing. It cares about whatever is, is the most efficient. And so having that, you know, human having an emotional intelligence is super important. Um, and there's ways to, to, to watch it. Like I said, you, you don't want to just give AI 
the rain and just let it go. Uh, you have to have guardrails. You have to have different components to to make sure it, it does a part, and that part is not going to get you in trouble. Um, so it doesn't have emotions. It can't build relationships with people. It can maintain relationships. It can start relationships, but it, it can't build them. Um, and so that's, you need to come in there. And like I said, AI is just a part of all of it. It's a piece of all of this, right? Um, understanding fully customers' needs. It can understand, or it can guess better than you can, um, but it, it doesn't, it, it won't fully get it. But once again, AI's benefit is scale. So it, it can guess and it can do kind of like if you half-ass and go in and, and research it, people, it could probably do better half-ass in it than you can. Um, but to tr truly understand someone's problem, that's where, you know, you have to jump in. But um, to get to that level, you can use AI. So those are things that are not as good at. Um, so now let's let's kind of jump into um, uh, the, the, the different solutions that we're about. And uh, so I have another podcast called Binary Views, and there's a co-host. Um, and so I'm, I'm generally used to to uh, like taking a pause and, and letting him talk, and then I can sip some. So uh, I'm probably going to be sipping throughout this. So you, you, this will be little pauses here and there. All right. So once again, my, my, my categories are um, they're going to be out of the box, which is going to be like instant tools that you can use right now. Um, something that you do less than a week, something you can do uh, less than a month, and this is going to require a little, a little uh, customization. Something you do within three months, and then also I kind of throw in a little bonus one each time, which is just kind of a creative idea that I just want to share. All right, so let, let's talk about tools. Um, so generally, there's 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 a million tools out there. <laughs> there's a lot of tools out there. Um, I've researched there's a whole bunch of them. And I've tried a whole bunch of them. Um, so generally, I'm going to recommend what I've done and what I've tried. And I would say one of the best ones right now to to really be beneficial to you is Clay. Um, I did Apollo. I did Clay. And Clay just has a little more... It, you can do a little more. Only thing is the cost of it. I mean, you you spend so much credits on everything you do, so it depends on your budget. But the, the one thing that I really liked in Clay was there's this thing called a Clay agent, which pretty much is like a web scraping agent, where you can put your OpenAI key in, and um, ChatGPT 3.5 is super cheap, and so you can do something like like what what I did was um, I gave I uploaded a spreadsheet, and so it's kind of a spreadsheet interface where you can enrich your data. So I uploaded a spreadsheet with um, my prospects uh, LinkedIn company profiles, and I told it to uh, go to that LinkedIn page, grab the, the LinkedIn, uh, that company's name, grab the, the company's website, grab their specialties, their company size, and also the company bio and structure it in the JSON format so that I can extract that information easily and do that for all of it. Now, initially, I tried to write code in Python to, to scrape that, but LinkedIn's um, security is just super good, and I'm not <laughs> that best at, at, at web scraping. Um, and so like I was trying to do, you know, rotating proxies and different things and, and leak in, it was just, just good. So uh, I did, I was like, forget it. You know, like I'm, I'm just going to try to find another solution. And this was, I mean, this was probably a while ago, like six months ago. And, and I had it do it and whatever clay does or LinkedIn doesn't catch it. So that's a really good example. And, and, and so I know I didn't say what clay is. Well, so pretty much you upload a spreadsheet of data and let's say you need someone's email, you need their uh, phone number, you need their company. Uh, clay has some different uh, APIs that they can talk to or different services that they partner with that can pull that information for you. And so you can get somebody's uh, company name and then their website, and then you can tell clay to scrape their website and get a overview of their website um and then you can like so you can do a whole bunch of different things to it it's a very flexible tool but it pretty much allows you to find information about your your lead or your prospect um and then enrich your database and then you can then push that to somewhere else so clay is a really good tool to use it, it is it's it's you don't need encode or anything i, I would say it's, a, it's it takes some time to get used to if you're not familiar with these concepts um but it, it's it can provide value instantly um, one that is done within a week, uh, I would say, so the idea I came up with, and like I said, I'm just going to be throwing out my ideas here, is uh, an AI generated uh, demo presentation, right? Uh, so picture, 
picture that somebody, um, let, let's say uh, somebody comes in through, let's say your, your clay automation. Um, they come in into like a inbound uh, form or whatever uh, content that you, or contact form, right? Um, they come in through the form, they put in their email, they put in their job title, they put in their industry. Um, you would kind of strategically pick what type of stuff you put in there because you would want to collect that data. That's data collecting data is everything now. Um, and then let's say that data comes in, they hit submit the form. The form goes to Clay. Clay has that person's industry, has their website, has their company. Uh, it has their, uh, their, their job title. Um, and then it says, all right, and Clay goes to their website, figures out what that company does, then comes up with some different pain points that company may have, um, some maybe some pain points that person might have, um, so who their target audience is, uh, what's, what, what solutions that you offer, or what... Um, pain points you solve might resonate with them and they can enrich that clients or that that prospects uh, portfolio or that you know that CRM kind of row before you even talk to them and as it comes in clay or another product or any, any kind of custom stuff can um, can enrich that data and then let's say you have a list that you need to call and you know 10 20 people that day and you automatically have all this extra AI generated uh, enrichment in that data um, that works great for, you know, outbound type stuff. But also if, if somebody's calling you, uh, you pull up their information and you have all this stuff, um, even like it's like rebuttals of of when you're trying to sell something, you know, uh, depending on your selling technique, um, if they're like, no, like, I don't want to do it because of this, like you can automatically have the AI come up with rebuttals on whatever, you know, things that you offer, um, to, to kind of counter everything. So there's, there's a lot of different things you can do, um, to, to kind of enrich your CRM, um, and, and stop all that manual, like research that you do for everyone, uh, and have this AI enriched research just automated and, and done for you. Um, so that's a good use case. I, I want to say maybe a week, a week or two, <laughs> uh, depends on, you know, how many people's working on it, but, but that would be super powerful. Right. Um, another one I thought about, um, is like, like, let's say like demo presentations, right? So you're actually presenting information to people and I'm going to kind of piggyback on that last one. Um, you're actually, you know, let's say you're in SaaS product or, or you're, you're doing some type of demos. Um, and, you do a whole bunch of demos, right? Um, I have a software company and I was doing demos all the time. And generally it, it, it takes, it's a skill doing demos is a skill. And you, you don't want to, you don't do the same demo every time you, 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 you do a different demo for every client. Um, you can either grab information beforehand and, and try to customize your demo right before you talk to them. Or you can, you know, spend the first five minutes learning what they want and then showing them what they want to see. Um, but generally, you always try to customize your demo based off of what they care about. What is their pain points? What? Why do they call you? You don't want to just show them what you think they want to see and what you think is the best features. You want to show them whatever is solving the pain that they called you for, right? Um, and and usually, like if you're a thirty minute demo, you, you spend that first, you know five, 10 minutes figuring that out. Um, and you're guessing it. Some people are good at it. Some people are not. Um, and so the idea that I came up with was, uh, kind of that same thing where you, you have that lead come in and, or you, you have an intro call. Um, so let's, let's take it a step further. Let's say uh, you have an intro call, quick 30 minute call, just to, to make sure your, your lead is good. Um, and you learn a whole bunch of information. You're asking the right questions. Um, and that, that, that data, that, 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 so let's say you use Zoom um, is being transcribed, right? So if you're you're recording it on the cloud, you can transcribe that, and you can enrich the 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 data that you gathered when they did the the form um, with whatever information they learn or you learned in that meeting, um, and that's all. Let's say that's all automated. AI grabs all of that, and and then it can say or it can build a, a presentation deck based off of whatever pain points they talked about in that meeting, right? So it grabs the transcription, here's what pain points that it came up with, and you can kind of tailor uh, the, the presentation deck to be 
whatever slides five six seven eight that the pain points they talked about and let's say you're another person does the demo and you pass it off um that deck is already created in the crm they just click it pops up they know what pain points they already want the deck's already built they know where to go um and it saves you know a tremendous amount of time and resources preparing for that type of stuff uh so that that's another use case that could could be done um, and as you say, like data enrichment is super big and super important uh, when it comes to sales and, and business development. It can be used a lot of different ways and AI is really good at it. And, and I've been doing a lot of data enrichment this last three months or so. So that's probably why most of my examples uh, are with that. Um, let's go into the next one, which is lead scoring. And <laughs> you'll learn data enrichment is part of that too. And it's because it, it's... <sighs> the data that you gather is the most important thing now and that's why i'm telling a lot of my my clients is is even if you're unsure of what to do with ai right now start collecting the data because the data you collect is going to be super valuable six 12 months from now when you want to do something and when you want to do something it's going to be a little like like you're gonna have to wait another few months or six months to to gather that data right so so do it now so that you have that data even if you're 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 not ready at the moment um because having the correct data is going to allow you to do a lot of great like amazing stuff um so collect the data all right um so the the next one is, is the lead scoring so let's say I mean, you're a small team, right? You don't have a lot of time. You don't have a lot of resources. You need to be able to spend your time on the people that are important and that are, are potentially the ones that are going to actually buy whatever solution you're offering. So um, you can have the AI do these scorings also. Um, and it's going to be looking at the same type of data. And, and it's going to... So when I do my lead scoring, I'm not just relying strictly on the AI. I'm integrating my own things as well. So there, there's, a, there's a partnership between your just basic kind of analytics and, and scoring what you deem is important and using the AI to score the other things. So there, there, it's not just like you're letting AI just score it. it, it you have to, to do... Like you have to configure it to a point where you as the person is still kind of guiding it. And what I mean by that is, is let's say that you, like one thing I do is, is if somebody's talking about something in a blog, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll scrape their blog post uh, for the company. And if they mention AI or they mention uh, data analytics or they mention some keywords, then they get a higher score than the others. But I use AI to go and search and figure out like the sediment of, of if they're using AI or not to be able to score it. I wouldn't be able to do that without it, right? So so it's there's kind of a, a partnership between me and AI to be able to do something like that. Um, same thing with if it's using their social media or something, it, you can't do that manually. It's too hard, but you can kind of tell it what to look for and what to do and then score it based off of that. So it just brings another level to your scoring that you didn't have previously. Um, so using AI to to enrich your scoring or using the data to to help with your scoring is super valuable. Um, also, like I said, the transcripts that if, if they're in the call and that whole transcripts is, is recorded, and you can have the AI and give that data to the AI and tell it, you know, to score it based off of whatever criteria you give it. Um, then that can be a, a way of doing it. And even like, like thinking bigger is if you have enough calls, you're if you 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 do you have a huge sales team or a decent sized sales team, and you have enough calls, and you're able to to uh, like categorize which clients start actually bought the product and which didn't. Um, and you, you record enough calls. Once again, that's why I said you start collecting that data. You, you would be able to tell the AI this type of person, uh, whatever they said or whatever they didn't say or whatever pain points they had generally buys my solution or buys my product. Um, and the AI would be able to, to learn what type of person or what type of prospect does and then be able to, to score it based off of that and learn ongoingly. Um, so there, there's a lot of different unique things you can do, but you don't want to just like, hey, here, score it. it, it you have to have a lot of guidelines um, to be able to do it, but it's super powerful when you do. Um, so the last one is a bonus one, which uh, this is just me 
share some some ideas that no one else wants to hear about. Uh, so one thing, I, one concept I thought about, like like I'm really trying to like get into psychology now. <laughs> uh, and one thing that I tried, which I didn't do a good job at, um, and it was didn't provide as much value as I thought, but was kind of looking at people's uh, like social media's accounts and uh, blog posts and, and kind of really look at like their word choice and how they say things and their tone. Um, and then being able to use that in my communication of like this person talks uh, in a more direct way. This person is a little more passive. Uh, this person, um, you know, has these interests. Uh, this is probably this person's personality type. Like I even came up with like a personality classification system um, and try to classify people's personality types. It was a good idea. Um, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't push it as much as I. I maybe should have or wanted to. I, I didn't see it being a, a huge value at the, the the amount of resources I want to put in it. Um, but that that would be a big project to do. And I kind of took some shortcuts and I was just like, hey, look at this person's uh, uh, LinkedIn post, right? And so that would be actually super powerful if somebody did it correctly, uh, because a lot of times, I, I mean, at surface level, we 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 think. Uh, we, we can like get some type of data or some type of analytics, but there's a lot more nuisance to the written text, especially in social media like that, that we're not seeing or not gathering and AI can gather it. And so I think if somebody does that right, they can really use that to their advantage. Now, ethically, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, Facebook and everybody does it too. So um, I, I'm not sure, <laughs> but um, I, it definitely could do it. Um, all right, so let, let's talk about some of the, the pitfalls. Um, so one of the pitfalls, um, and, and this is all learned. I mean, AI is like, a, I mean, not a year old, but like like mainstream a year old, right? Um, is, is trying to get AI to do everything. Um, you want AI to do the very bare minimum. And so like 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 I said, I, I, there was times where I... I, I should have just did some code just to do some logic and did it. And I had the AI do it in, instead, which now I know it's not smart. Um, and so you try to get the AI to do just the things that you can't code or you can't create logic or conditions for um, and, and have it do the bare minimum. Uh, so try to do anything that you can with coding before you talk to the AI. Um, another thing is, is you can't just build something and forget about it. You, you constantly have to improve it and, and innovate because things are changing constantly. There's new models every two weeks. Like I'm really big in the, the open source models right now and there's always new models and there's it's just constantly coming. Um, and I'm training my own model and then there's like another model comes out and I'm like, damn, should I, re should I train my model? Like, should I train it on that model? And, and it, you just have to test it and you have to keep doing it because it just gets better and better at an exponential rate. So don't think you're just going to build something and, and you're done. It, it, you're going to have to keep going. Um, the data quality, quality is huge. Um, you'd rather have a little bit of data um, and, and, and be super high quality than have a whole bunch of data and there's errors. Um, and so th those are kind of the big things to watch out for. Um, if you're, let's, let's kind of talk about the, the future of it uh, in this segment. Um, the, the big ones right now is like the phone calls. Um, they they can be done, but generally it's probably the people that are going to trick are like the old people or the people that don't know about AI. Right? Anybody else that does know, they're gonna they're gonna know, and then they're gonna be offended that you try to trick them. Um, so probably like doing it to a point where you're just upfront with it, like, hey, this is an AI call and badass, right? Like like that might work um, if it's if it's the right use case not to sell somebody per se, but to, to maybe, um, I don't know, answer somebody's questions or, or do like an FAQ. Uh, one idea that I did come up with what I, which I thought was brilliant. I haven't seen it yet out there is, um, we talked about the demo, right? Getting the decks done. But, uh, what about if the AI actually did the demo for you, right? It did all the research. Um, it knows what to look for. If you train it on, on how your product works, um, there's also, you know, the, the AI cloning now, which is really good. Like, Hey, Jen has a really good one. And, and within a minute video, um, 
you don't even know it's not a real person. Like it's, it's pretty good and it's going to get better. Right. But if, if somebody knows it's an AI and they're just like, Hey, can I, um, can I have a demo instead of watching that stupid webinar? It's just a 30 minute demo. Um, that is not specific to me. Um, this, this demo can be specific to their pain points and, and also be a live demo where the AI can answer the questions and maneuver and do different things. And it could be on a zoom call where it's face to face with you. And, and you're almost doing the same thing as a regular person. Um, I mean, just picture how much time you would save, um, not having to do demos and, and just, you know, nurturing relationships. Um, so I haven't seen nothing out there, but I think that was going to be pretty nice when that does come. Um, so yeah, that, that's it for this episode. You guys, uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, please comment on, on whatever your, your favorite idea is. Uh, and if you want it to, uh, you want me to, to elaborate a little bit more on any ideas, uh, I can talk about this all day. So, uh, comment which one you want me to elaborate on, and then I'll possibly create a YouTube video kind of going in more and more detail. All right, you guys, see you.